أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستكفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا وسيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مذل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا أبده ورسوله the chairman of uh, the occasion and also the vice chancellor of uh, Bayero University, Kano, our brother Professor Sagir Abbas Adamu, the chairman of uh, the Islamic Forum of Nigeria, represented by the vice chair, our father Al Haji. M.T. Bello, the representative of uh, the governor of Kano State, chief of staff to the governor, Al-Haji Usman Bala, Muhammad, our father and the murshid of uh, the National Masjid, Professor Shehu Galadanchi, the Executive Secretary of the Forum and also the Vice Chancellor of uh, an East Tama University, and also Walin Tafao Balewa, Professor Salis Shehu, my colleagues, Managing Directors of uh, Galaxy Backbone, and also Nigerian Communication Satellite, and also His Highness the area of Kano, represented by Wali, that is Wali Kano. <laughs> Uh, Vice Chancellor here, uh, President of Khadija University, and uh, I am not aware of any university like Ali Kotakote University, but the name was mentioned here. <laughs> oh, the Kano State University of Science and Technology. Okay, so I have been indicated. Thank you very much. Members or council members of uh, Islamic Forum of Nigeria, CEOs of uh, various institutions here present, permit me to, for the remaining, to copy and paste the protocol earlier observed by the Executive Secretary Professor Salis Shehu in order to save our time. Ladies and gentlemen of uh, the press, all other protocols duly and respectfully observed. Good evening to all of you. And uh, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May Allah's peace, mercy, and blessings be upon you. I begin by thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the opportunity to travel from Abuja to Kano in order to present this lecture along with other activities, inshallah. Then I also want to use the opportunity once again to appreciate the Islamic Forum of Nigeria for inviting me to be here with you physically for this discussion. I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us aright and to make the presentation beneficial to humanity, particularly the listeners that are with me here physically and those who are going to listen virtually. Before I was called upon to address you, I was contemplating how to present the lecture. 
looking at the composition of uh, the participants and the listeners here. Some are from academia, some from government, some from industry, some from uh, associations, some from market, and many other places. So I was wondering how to present the lecture so that each and every listener will be able to appreciate the presentation and also benefit from it. It is one of the most difficult presentations to be met is for you to be invited to address a gathering that is not only for one class of stakeholders or one class of our people. If it is in the academia, it is much, much easier. Or for government officials. But today, the gathering is a collection of all. So this is what makes it difficult for me to make the presentation. However, I will, inshallah, make an attempt to ensure that each and every one of us here will be able to appreciate the presentation and also learn from it. May Allah Ta'ala guide us aright. Furthermore, the topic given to me by the Islamic Forum of Nigeria is digital economy where the North stands. This topic is very apt. And I'm highly excited the first day I received the topic from the Executive Secretary because I think it is a clear indication that we are making progress, that Islamic institutions and uh, Islamic organizations are not only to organize lectures on only prayer or fasting in the month of Ramadan or traveling for pilgrimage, but rather we must appreciate the fact that Economic development is part and parcel of uh, the teaching of our religion. We must agree that whatever affects our life, it is part and parcel of our religion. So I'm highly excited that Islamic Forum of Nigeria invited all of us here in order to discuss digital economy where the northern part of the country stands. Only Last month, I was in Fountain University in Ocean State, another faith-based university which has been uh, established by our Muslim brothers and sisters from the southern part of the country, an excellent university. And the discussion was around digital economy, digital innovation, digital entrepreneurship, how the Muslim Ummah can address the challenge of unemployment through digital economy. I'm excited that in the northern part of Nigeria, Islamic Forum of Nigeria emerges as the pioneer in organizing this important discussion, not only to address our Islamic activities directly, but rather to address economic development and how the Muslim Ummah will be part and parcel of this. The effort is commendable, and I pray to the Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to put the reward in the scale of their good deeds. Thank you. Digital economy, I will try to summarize the lecture because of our time constraint. Digital economy can easily be defined as the economic activities that depend on digital technologies fully or partially. Any economic activity that depends on ICT devices, any economic activity that depends on internet, any economic activity that depends on our smartphones or computers, any economic activity that depends on the fourth industrial revolution is part and parcel of a digital economy. With this simple definition, which is a summary of what the World Economic Forum, Oxford Economics, and also International Telecommunication Union presented, that any economic activity that depends on ICT in any way, either fully or partially, 
is part and parcel of our digital economy. Furthermore, there are two prerequisites to digital economy. It has two necessary ingredients. These two ingredients, number one is digital innovation. Number two is digital entrepreneurship. These are the two prerequisites to building a digital economy. Digital innovation, in summary, can be described as using ICT ideas or technologies in order to address an existing problem through a creative way. When you come up with an ICT idea or a digital idea or ICT device, in order to deploy it and address an existing problem or challenge using some creative ways, this is in summary what digital innovation is all about. Today, if you look at it, most of the facilities we make use of are part and parcel of our digital innovation. Your smartphone is part and parcel of digital innovation. Most of the applications we download on our phone, they are part and parcel of our digital innovation, whether for your health, whether for your commercial activities, whether for your academic activities, as long as you download any application on your computer or smartphone, in order to make use of that, then by implication, you are enjoying a digital innovation. So digital innovation is all about identifying an existing problem. That problem could be a local challenge and it could be a global one. That is why it's part and parcel of our soft skills to master how to identify complex problem and come up with innovative ideas to address it. For example, today, many people patronize Uber or Bolt. By implication, this is a digital innovation. When you go online to purchase anything, it's part of digital innovation. When you intend to travel by air and you go online to book your ticket, you are also patronizing digital innovation. When you go online to book your hotel room, it's part and parcel of our digital innovation. So all these facilities that we are enjoying day in, day out, they are part and parcel of digital innovation. You transfer money online is part of it. You go to MTA machine to withdraw your money is part and parcel of it. You go online e-commerce platform in order to purchase something online is part and parcel of our digital innovation. That aside, the second one is digital entrepreneurship. With regards to digital innovation, the fourth one, the first one, today if you look at it, more than 95% of the fourth industrial revolution is about digital innovation. More than 95% of the fourth industrial revolution. And this is the only industrial revolution in which African countries are not far away from the developed countries. As we all know, the, fourth, the first industrial revolution took place in the 18th century with the invention of steam power in the United Kingdom, particularly in Manchester and Liverpool. The invention of steam power brought about the first industrial revolution, while the second industrial revolution was about the invention of electricity, mass production, and many more, which took place in the UK, followed by Belgium, Germany, France, and the United States of America. Even in the second industrial revolution, UK was leading. But some countries were chasing the UK, and they were termed as the chess group, Belgium, France, Germany, and the US. And this took place also in the 19th century. Then the third industrial revolution also was on ICT with the invention of internet, world wide web, which brought about globalization, where you sit down 
and you watch something happening in another part of the world, whether in the US or in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia or China, you sit down, you watch it at the time it is happening live. And you also go online to search. So the invention of internet, world wide web, and few are, and even the advancement in computer brought about the third industrial revolution. So in addition to the countries that excelled in the second industrial revolution, in the third industrial revolution, there were new entries. Japan and Australia, they were part and parcel of the third industrial revolution. None of the African countries was part of the first, second, and third. However, one may wish to argue there, that there was a technological advancement in some parts of Africa, even prior to the first industrial revolution, in places like Morocco, in Egypt, if you look at the way they built their pyramids, which is among the seven wonders of the world, and some pyramids are over 3,500 years today, some even over 4,000 years ago, there is no way that this pyramid could be constructed without technological advancement. Even prior to the first, second, and third, there was a form of industrial revolution in Andalus, the modern day Spain, particularly the southern part of Spain from Madrid, Zaragoza, Mallorca, Cadiz, Cordova, and many more. And also part of France, like Lyon, Monaco, and the complete part of Portugal. So these three places produced what was then Bilal in Andalus. And also there was an advancement in Baghdad. At that time, Cairo, Baghdad, and Andalus were leading the world in technological advancement. However, modern researchers completely ignored the development in these parts of the world. They only capitalized on the first, second, and third industrial revolution, which took place mostly in Europe and part of America. So, the most important point is the fact that third industrial revolution is about ICT. Then the evolution of ICT brought about the fourth industrial revolution. The fourth industrial revolution is about emerging technologies. And these emerging technologies brought about what we have today as a digital economy. And this is part of the fourth industrial revolution with the invention of 5G, nanotechnology, biotechnology, cloud computing, augmented reality, virtual reality, autonomous vehicle, internet of things or internet of everything, artificial intelligence, robotics, and many more. So these are the fourth, these are the emerging technologies that brought about digital economy today. And if you look at today, our security system globally depends on digital technologies. Commercial activities, economic activities globally depend on digital technologies. The same with education today, the same with our health care system. All of them, you will discover that today they depend on digital technologies. In addition, if we understand what digital innovation is all about, we move to digital entrepreneurship, which is the second part of our digital economy. Digital entrepreneurship, in summary, entrepreneurship is self-employment. When someone employs himself, he becomes an entrepreneur. So entrepreneurship is about being an employer of yourself. You employ yourself. This is what entrepreneurship is all about. So digital entrepreneur is someone who depends on digital technologies to employ himself. By implication, he is the employer and he employs himself. So by implication, he is the employer and the employee. So digital entrepreneurship is about leveraging on digital platforms in order to employ yourself. And by implication or by extension, you also employ others. 
You employ yourself and you also employ others. So these are the two most important components of a digital economy. Firstly, is digital innovation. Secondly, is digital entrepreneurship. Today, if you look at the e-commerce, it's part of digital entrepreneurship. And you can appreciate the fact that digital entrepreneurship is leading the world and digital innovation as well. If you look at the richest people today in the world, like Elon Musk, like Jeffrey Bezos and others, you will discover that all of them excel in digital innovation on one hand and digital entrepreneurship on the other. For example, look at Jeffrey Bezos, the founder of Amazon. This will make you to appreciate the power of digital innovation and digital entrepreneurship. This guy came up with his start off around 1994 using second hand computer, partaking in critical thinking in order to solve a complex problem. That complex problem was to provide a platform where potential buyers and potential sellers will come together and interact on that platform. He partook in building that platform, commencing from 1994 up to 2004, without making a profit of one dollar. He made his first profit around 2004 and early 2005. And by 2017, within only 12 years, he became the richest person in the world. This guy only came up with this digital innovation. And that digital innovation makes him to become a digital entrepreneur. Where he brings together potential buyers and potential sellers to interact. And in the course of doing that, he gets his own profit. What I want us to understand from this, Elon Musk doesn't have any shop, doesn't manufacture any product globally. Only what he does was maintaining that platform of Amazon. And he gets something from the activities taking place between buyers and sellers. And that catapulted him to become the richest man in the world for three to four consecutive years. He had a problem with his wife or partner and he divorced her. What he gave her as part of the agreement of that divorce, immediately after transferring that money to her account, immediately, only two years ago, she became among the richest people in the world, to the extent that no person was richer than her in the entire African continent, with a population of around 1.4 billion and with 54 countries. Look at the power of digital innovation and digital entrepreneurship. Up to date, he doesn't have any shop. He doesn't manufacture any product. It's only the platform. Furthermore, the same with Uber. Uber today is the largest and also the biggest taxi institution in the world. But Uber doesn't have any taxi. Only what they do is to establish the platform. When you travel, you go online, try to see how you can get a taxi. From that interaction, they will be able to get their profit. They don't have one taxi. But still, no taxi institution in the world that generates revenue and profit the way they do it. This is the power of digital innovation and digital entrepreneurship. And this is what is driving the world economy today. For example, in the US, they admit that digital economy is driving their economy. A research conducted by the U.S. Bureau of Economic Development from 2006 to 2016, 10 years. The traditional economy grew 
by 1.5%, while the digital economy grew by 5.6%. So if you look at it, the growth rate of digital economy was more than three times the growth rate of the traditional or the general economy. Furthermore, when it comes to employment within AYA, around 2016 and 2017, the US government was able to provide jobs for around eight to nine million citizens. In China, in one year, only around one, 2018, they created around 191 million new jobs for their citizens, leveraging on digital innovation on one hand and digital entrepreneurship on the other. This is only within one year. In addition, let us look at the global economy, come down to Africa, and also narrow down our discussion to Nigeria, and finally to Northern Nigeria. If you look at the global economy today, according to the International Monetary Fund, IMF, in December 2022, the global economy was 101.6 trillion USD. 101.6 trillion USD, the global economy. And if you look at it, you will discover that the countries that excel in digital innovation and digital entrepreneurship are the ones that are driving the global economy. For example, today, US is hosting the tech giants. More than 60 to 70 percent of the tech giants are in the US. Without in any way relying on their natural resources, they only provide the enabling environment. They came up with many categories of visa, where if they discover your talent, they will allow you to migrate to the country, you live there, within a few years you become the citizen of the country. So they have a professional visa they issue to people. As long as they know you can add value to their economy, they make it flexible. You can easily become the citizen of the country. Today, through that, look at it, the vice president of the US came from where? India. The prime minister of uh, the UK, the same from India. So if you look at it today, from this 101.6 trillion USD, by December 2022, the gross domestic product of the US was 25 trillion USD. By implication, the US controls around one fourth or 25 percent of our global GDP. Followed by India, what brought about that achievement is digital innovation and digital entrepreneurship. Followed by, in, by, by China, the GDP of China by IMF ANOVA by December 2022 was 18.4 trillion USD. What brought about that is digital innovation and digital entrepreneurship. Which country has the third largest economy in the world? Japan. The GDP of Japan, 4.3 trillion USD. And the population of Japan is around 125 to 126 million people. And they have the third largest economy. The economy of Japan with 125 million people is bigger than the entire economy of Africa as a continent, with a population of 1.4 billion and also 54 countries. The GDP of Japan is around 4.3, but in Africa today, the entire GDP is around 3 trillion USD. Why? Because it's the digital technology. And the fourth largest economy by December 2022 was Germany. Look at the population of Germany as well. The population of Germany is less than 100 million people. 
So by implication, their population is less than 50% of our population in Nigeria. But their GDP was more than 4 trillion USD. Beginning of 2022, UK was the fifth largest economy. But by December 2022, India emerged as the fifth ahead of the UK. With a GDP of 3.5 trillion USD, while the UK was 3.2 trillion USD. What catapulted India higher is all about digital innovation and digital entrepreneurship. While I was writing my book skills rather than just degrees, I was going through the citizens of uh, India and I discovered that out of 40 tech giants in the world, Indian citizens occupy 37 out of 40 positions globally. And these 37, all of them, or at least 35 out of 37, are associated with one institution there, Indian Institute of Technology, IIT. All of them. What promoted India is all about digital innovation and digital entrepreneurship. And these are the two prerequisites to building an indigenous digital economy. <coughs> Furthermore, in Africa, with a population of around 1.4 billion people, we have the second largest continent, second most populous continent in the world second to Asia. When it comes to number of countries, there is no continent that has up to 54 countries except Africa. And still, we are leading in diversity. But yet our economy still is only around 3 trillion USD with that population. A country with only 125 million people is far, far ahead of us. That is Japan. This is highly worrisome. If you look at most of African countries, except maybe North African countries like Morocco, Algeria, Egypt, North African countries are doing well, and some South African countries. Still, West Africa, Nigeria is not doing bad. The same with Ghana, with all the challenges of inflation. But if you look at more than 90% of African countries, the situation is highly, highly worrisome. Why is worrisome? Is the fact that if you want to manage poverty, your population growth rate should be lower than your economic growth rate. If your population growth is higher than your economic growth, then by implication, that poverty will continue to increase. Today, in most of our countries, including Nigeria, there is no doubt our population growth is higher than our economic growth. There is no doubt. So by implication, if you compute our GDP per capita, GDP per head, you will discover that it is coming down. Why? Because our population growth is higher than our economic growth. So the poverty will continue to increase. And if you look at the countries that their GDP per head is increasing, you will discover that most of them today are not in any way relying on their natural resources, but rather they leverage on digital innovation and digital entrepreneurship. If you look at the best economy in the world, not in terms of quantity, but rather in GDP per capita, you will discover that most of them are not in any way leveraging on natural resources, but rather they leverage on their talent to come up with innovative ideas. And they export their talent and their ideas. And this catapulted them to be leading the world in the area of uh, GDP per head. Number one country when it comes to GDP per head is in Europe, a small country, Luxembourg, followed by which country is number two? 
Switzerland. Number three is Ireland. Number four is Norway. Number five is the U.S. Up to, you, you will not discover a country with natural resources till around eight and nine. That is Qatar. But all the countries leading, even if they are blessed with natural resources, you'll discover that they prioritize skills, particularly coming up with innovative solutions. <laughs> Let us take another example in order to explain this better. Luxembourg is leading the world in the area of GDP per head, while the US is leading the world in the area of GDP, nominal GDP. Both of them prioritize skills, prioritize digital innovation and digital entrepreneurship. They encourage their citizens to partake in critical thinking, identify complex problems, and come up with innovative ideas, and implement these innovative ideas for global consumption. That is what they usually do. And if you look at, for example, some selected cities in the world that excel in innovation, you will discover that their economy is also leading the world. Take, for example, Silicon Valley in the United States of America. Silicon Valley is part of southern San Francisco. I was there even last month in December 2022. I had a meeting with SpaceX and Starlink of Elon Musk in the U.S. Today, if Silicon Valley were to be a country, it will be the best economy globally, GDP per head, ahead of Luxembourg, Switzerland, and others. It's not even a country, but if Silicon Valley were to be a country, this will be the situation. The entire landmass of Silicon Valley is around 1,845 square miles. So by implication, you can say, a state like Kano, Kano, which is around 20 to 21,000 square kilometers. You can safely say that. And Kano is the second smallest state in northern Nigeria when it comes to landmass. Kano is the second smallest state in northern Nigeria in the area of landmass. Kano is only bigger than Gombe State in the entire northern Nigeria in terms of landmass. So if you look at it, Kano, which is the second smallest in northern Nigeria, could be even 10 times bigger than the Silicon Valley. And not to talk of Niger State with a landmass of 96,000 square kilometers approximately. So by implication, one may wish to say that Niger could be even 30 times the size of Silicon Valley. Luxembourg with the highest economy per head in 2021, you will discover was 116 